you everybody for being here. It's a great show, a show, a show of hands. I so appreciate you guys joining us. So welcome to Coastline Community College's um, cost recruitment workshop. Um, for some, a quick introduction, I am Catherine Amukte. I was hired to um, kick off the eSports program at Coastline Community College as a professional expert, and I've been with the school now for like six months. So the first thing I want to do is go talk about a little bit about the rollout of the eSport program at Coastline Community College. Uh, we have been very fortunate. Uh, this program started with our dean, Dr. Emma, um, Dr. Dana Emerson. He, she was really, um, truly believed that eSports was a great tool to help us engage more with the student population at Coastline. And she's absolutely right. We've had enormous response, um, partly of look at how many kids have shown up here, but also in the club and in our Discord. Once the initiative was started and we were at Coastline, uh, we had great support from our Director of Communication and Marketing as well, Dawn Wilson. She has been instrumental in helping us promote the program. I think most of you besides our panel probably have seen some of her work. Um, she has, we have a great um, website that outlines our program as well as she's been promoting it through the student body and also to staff as well. Now, student interest has been great. Uh, we have started out with three founding members. Um, Sabrina, I'm not sure Sabrina is on the call today or not. She's been on previous ones. She's a president. Uh, she's been a really great leader. Uh, we have a, a we're building up a, a really good Discord following, as well as we have a whole bunch of events coming up, and, and a lot of the students are joining in. Now, as far as workshops goes, we have complete the parent panel workshop already. Uh, we've also did a, a, a workshop on streaming. And the last one, which is the one we're doing today, is on um, a college recruitment. Um, as far as teams, we have two teams. We have a Valorant team and Legal Legends team. I think the Valorant team is a little bit ahead of the Legal Legends team. The Legal Legends team is, I think, looking still for a couple more players. Uh, but the goal really is just get the team together this summer, um, have some practices, and perhaps even do, uh, you know, some friendly pickup games uh, along the way somewhere before fall starts. Okay, so, you know, we talk about the pathway, right, between um, be casual gamer, whether you're a high school community college on, on a club team like we have here at Coastline or on an official team, um, or you play in an amateur league, for example, there's uh, a gap, in my opinion, to go into career in college. And so what we try to do is to help students that have an interest and a passion in esports to reach that next step, whether it's to work in esports or whether it's to get a four-year scholarship uh, to uh, continue their education. So first up is our first speaker, uh, Camille Ann Keeler. Uh, I just met her actually uh, last weekend. Uh, she attends Michigan Technological University. She's studying biology and pre-med. Um, she is on the Overwatch team. And she's also on a full ride scholarship with Air Force ROTC program. So welcome, Camille. Welcome Hi, to I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So I was thinking you could tell us a little bit about your background and in particular, talk to, about the, talk to us about the recruitment process uh, with the Air Force. Okay, um, so for me personally and my family situation, like in high school, like as I was like pretty much college, college was the big goal after high school, right? But my parents kept pushing me. They're kind of just like, you got to get as much money for us as possible because just from like awkward like financial circumstances and so my family um, has a heavy military history my father in particular is um, was served in the Navy and so I knew ROTC was always an option so I worked really hard in high school I was one of that full honors student varsity did all the clubs like all that and then when it came to my senior year um, I applied for the ROTC scholarship and yeah, I, they covered a great like portion of my scholarship um, and my tuition bill. A lot of it got covered by my school too, Michigan Tech. And with the varsity program, I am getting offered a scholarship for, through that too. So it's really nice. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Uh, it sounds like Thank you've worked you. really hard at it and you really earn it. Um, I want to ask you a couple of questions, though. Um, since you're on a team, okay, and you're in college, right? Can you tell us um, how was that experience, um, you know, going away to school, you know, being a part of a team? Did that help your transition from high school to college? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm from California, actually, originally. So I was really far from home going to Michigan. And I remember the biggest thing I was worried about is, like, 
they're like everyone at least knows each other like oh you're from this part of Michigan and I was just the one like lone girl from like California but like when I started doing the Overwatch team or the esports program like we we really clicked really quickly because it when you have something like that like an extracurricular but not only that a, a hobby but something that you want to excel at it's really easy to connect with the people around you so I remember that first club meeting meeting all of my like teammates in person it was I felt I was kind of geeking out <laughs> but it definitely made the transition easier because I felt like in high school you were forced to like hang out with the people in your class in college you're kind of like forced to expand I guess you choose who you want to hang out with and who you want to be around Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I mean, I have kids of my own that go to college, and I think that that's a great thing to have that support system around you, right? Because you're part of a family, you know. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the team dynamics? Like, since you're on a team, um, does that help you day to day, you know, as far as with school and, and adjusting? Oh, for sure. Um, so I think, like, the big greatest part about being on a team is just straight up you need to have good communication. And I feel like just being on a team, because if you don't, if you call the wrong thing, if you say the wrong thing, or if you just put out the wrong tone, something wrong is going to happen. So I feel like playing like in a team dy dynamic, your communication skills increase exponentially. Um, not only that, I feel like it's, it's a sociable sport. Like you can't just like not talk to each other like that. So I feel like those two things that's part of why I'm doing it. I'm trying to go into medicine at some point. So having as much like life skills and team building skills is really important for the long term, especially like in an adult life. Wow, that's great to hear that not only is the uh, teams helping you, right, as a resource and supporting you, but that also you're learning some real life skills, like communication skills and, you know, social skills. I'm very happy for you. I think that's great. And uh, I'm a fellow Californian, so, you know, a shout out to you. I'm glad you're in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> the weather, I'm sure, is slightly different, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that offline. <laughs> okay so our next speaker is josh um mr god game gint and uh welcome josh welcome to the the workshop uh you're a third year student studying computer engineering at michigan technological university uh you started as an overwatch club team manager and then transitioned to player and i'd like to talk to you about that a little bit more because i think a lot of kids will find themselves you know whether they get a scholarship or not they go to a college and maybe there's not an official uh you know team uh, esports team there right school team so you know how did you transition from and first of all how did you find the club to begin with to be the team manager yeah so Originally, finding the club, it was basically by accident. I actually had never played Overwatch before I'd gotten to college. Um, and I got into it because I was in a, a dorm hall with a bunch of the people who found the team in their own ways. Uh, basically, I was in the, like a computer science dorm hall with a few computer engineers. And uh, they introduced me to the team. I learned about it, learned about Overwatch in that way. And one day, uh, my best friend was talking about how, like, he was basically selected as, like, captain because the entire team from, like, the previous year had been changed. And he wasn't, like, ready to handle all the stress of, like, doing the administration stuff for the team. So I, I said kind of jokingly, kind of serious, that I could do it for him uh, as long as I didn't actually have to play because at that point I think I was actually level three in Overwatch. I couldn't even play comp. And the joke turned into reality and I became the manager, set up scrim schedules for uh, a team, I think of 10 at that point and managed the team for the first three semesters on campus. And then through just like playing the game and learning from the team, I got, bet uh, got good enough to make the team myself my fourth semester. Um, and in that time, in the first semester on campus, we made the esports club uh, at MTU and then from there I was elected vice president and we pushed for the varsity program to start this upcoming fall. Wow Josh that's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> Let's start yeah. with yeah. I want to say I really really want to go back to one of the big points uh, that I've never heard from before that I think was really important for us to talk about is that you didn't even play Overwatch while you were in college right and so three semesters later not only are you good at the game, but good enough to make the team. And I think we should really talk about that because a lot of students, especially at the community college where I'm at right now, will say, I love gaming, you know, but I really don't play any of the esports games. You know, what is, is there a place for me? I'd like to talk, do you talk more about how you got there? 
Yeah, so um, Overwatch, I would say, is like my, the first competitive game on PC that I ever got into. Um, I used to be fairly competitive, like a top 100 player in uh, the NBA 2K series back in the day. So from there, that's where I had like the basics of t- team communication. But when it came down to Overwatch and like get grinding out the game and getting better there, it was more of I picked or I, I started playing the game found out that I really liked it and uh, having the team environment like that I was managing, seeing them play, I wanted to get better and be like as good as them so I could join them at some point. And I used, I basically used the team uh, as motivation to get better. And then I, uh, I guess I pushed myself from there. I mean, Josh, that's very impressive. And I think I would love to reiterate that again to students that are in this group today that, you know, you don't have to like, be born playing you know league of legends or overwatch you know top notch right highly ranked that it's really something that you can grow into and and if maybe you play like before you played nba 2k and that kind of those skill sets transitioned you to play overwatch and now you're on the team i think i really applaud you for that must take a lot of hard work as well thank you it definitely took a lot of playing overwatch (laughs) (laughs) okay so the last question i want to ask you before we go on is that how do you well, I should say how. Do you, is there a struggle or is there, um, you know, a pull and, and push uh, with your time when you're both on the team as well as going to college? Um, so since I was the manager for three semesters, I knew when I like, when I was about to start playing, what the time commitment, commitment would be for uh, like working in class and homework and uh, scrims and matches and everything and how to balance my time. So I haven't had a problem with it um, so far. Uh, going into third year engineering classes, I guess th- that could change, especially with varsity schedules, uh, having a little bit more uh, t- scrim practices. Um, but basically how I would manage the time is uh, I would be able to, I would try to get my classes done by about 3 p.m. at the latest and have, you know, probably from like two to six or like whenever scrims start to do homework and I'll be able to, uh, I would usually be able to finish in time. If not, I would definitely save some for after scrims and I would, I don't know. I think I was just lucky in order to like, in order to work my schedule around scrims and being able to, uh, get through the home, like homework and, uh, tests and everything like that, get my studying done. Uh, where I still had all the time for scrims that I needed. I can't really explain how. I just, I, like, part of it is luck. Like, I didn't have any nighttime labs that conflicted with scrims. But, uh, yeah, I just so, got my work done. So it sounds like some organization skills are needed to do this and, and really be motivated that you really want to do both and do it both well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you were talking, uh, both your, uh, Ryan, the coach and I were shaking our heads going, Oh yeah, I'm an engineer by training. And I remember that I don't know, uh, that takes an immense amount of organization, I think, and willpower on your part to do, but it sounds like it's doable. Yeah, it's definitely manageable. I've never had, I've never, uh, like gone into co- or gone to a class thinking that I'm not going to do well. Like I've, I feel like I've always been able to prepare myself for the classes I'm in as well as taking time for the scrims and everything like that. Great. Great. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Okay. Next we have our coach, uh, Ryan Hines. He's a head coach of Concordia university. Uh, he also coached at the high school level before going on to college, uh, for three years. And he led the Nebraska schools esports association in creating a high school league for his state. Welcome coach. Hello. Thank you for being here. So I wanted to talk to you about, in particular, since you're our head coach, um, the recruitment process. Um, how is that like? And, and more importantly, what do you look for in a recruit? Yeah, most of it is us trying, us as coaches trying to, you know, find, you know, where the recruits are at, whether that's like on Be Recruited, if there are different events that are happening that people are um showing off, you know, their abilities and that we're able to reach out and and then contact them. Um, But for the most part, a lot of it is too, you know, you're reaching uh, students reaching out to me saying, Hey, I'm interested in esports and would like to join. Um, But what we're really looking for in a esport athlete is just somebody who's very dedicated. And especially for programs like mine that are just beginning, we're looking for high dedication of 
They want to get this started. They want to be involved at the ground level of getting things going and, and knowing that it's going to be a, a little rough until things are smoothed out. But um, looking for exactly the kind of things that um, Camille was talking about and Josh where, you know, you got to be dedicated. You have to know what your uh, communication skills are and being able to talk and to, um, I, I call it being uh, a team player and just have that mindset of, I need to work with my team and help them to get better um, as well as myself. Right. It's interesting that you have not said anywhere in there about in-game ranking. So it sounds like that, um, you know, I talked to a lot of students, right? And that one thing they keep telling me is that, no, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I know. So I want to go back a little bit and you know Josh was saying he started the game brand new in college, number one. Okay. And what you're saying as a head coach is that in-game ranking didn't seem to even hit the top three items that you look for in a recruit. No, I mean, in-game ranking is important when you're trying to find out where a student is starting from as far as, you know, what their skill level is, but it's not important because they'll improve with team practice and with a structure around them for, you know, learning. So if they've got a, a plat sitting next to a gold, you know that gold's going to play on the same level as the plat guy because they're communicating, they're working together, they're trying to improve. And even beyond that, I mean, there are games that I'm not very good at, but when I'm playing with a team and with a squad, you just do better because you have that, that one up on the other team of, you know, they might not be a squad or might not have that. So skill is just sort of a, a starting point to say, all right, here's what we got to work on with you in game. But if, if you've got the communication and you, and you are given the time to improve yourself, then yeah, I, it, it doesn't matter just because you will improve. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw Camille was nodding feverishly as you were talking that she wholeheartedly agrees with you. That sounds like dedication, being coachable, um, putting in the hard work, right? Like what Josh did, you know, for the first three semesters before making the team, that that seemed to rank much higher uh, than to say that I come to you and say, hey, coach, guess what? I'm ranked, whatever. Right. I mean, when you've got, you know, two great examples in, in this, uh, in this talk so far of just saying, Hey, communication is really important. And Hey, I was just grinding the game and here I am. Right. So with those, you know, that's so much easier. And I, the one thing that is really big for me um, for high school and collegiate level is coachability. And that's not just from someone like me. That's mm -hmm. like how, how easily can you learn from your teammates? How easily do you just learn in general to get better at the game because I can teach you some things, but I, you know, if it's a game that I'm not great at, then I got to rely on other people who are better to try to teach you. And if you come in saying, look, I, I, I know I can hit challenger and I, I don't need any help with any. Okay. Then, then I don't really want to have to mess with that. And neither do your teammates who are, are sitting there going, man, this guy's just cocky, arrogant. He doesn't want any help. You know, that does not help the team. You know, that's a really, really good point, coach, because I, I hear over and over again that, you know, you're a head coach, right? And, but, you know, you, you know, you support several different teams and there's no way you could be a, a great, you know, a ranked, highly ranked player in all those games. And so a lot of coaches could say that they don't know a particular game that well, but they know strategy, they know communication. And that a lot of times um, the team gets better together from learning from each other. Right. I mean, it's just how, you know, it, before – competitive esports existed on a collegiate front or even a high school front that's how we had pro players in league of legends counter-strike and all all the big games that have been uh you know professionally played for years it, we've had that because students have been out there grinding and and just playing the game a lot and understanding it so yeah it it uh for people like myself you know i'm, I'm good at one game but what i'm really great at is helping people critically think on strategy and trying to, to learn that and to really process it more. So, you know, in the games that I am good at, I do a pretty good job, but in the games I'm not, I do rely on students um, to, to help inform me about what things they need to be working on. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Coach. Yeah. Okay, our last speaker is Leto. Leto, are you here? Don't see him here. 
Uh, Leto is actually, if he's not here, uh, I apologize. Um, he's the head coach of University of West Ontario in Canada. Um, I really wish you had joined us today because he has a very, very unique background and talk, and I can speak for him because uh, I know him pretty well now, um, but I wish you heard it from him directly. Uh, so he was great in high school and through a series of, uh, you know, just networking and working with other kids, he ended up being the head coach, kind of like what Josh did, uh, you know, at his school at University of West Ontario. Um, kidding, but not really, you know, uh, I can do that. And then he became the head coach and he get, and that program is actually very, very successful. It's one of the high, most uh, highly ranked teams around, in Canada. And so what's interesting that I want him to talk about with you today was that, okay, so, you know, the there's some ideas about, you know, what coaches are like, right? You know, what, what do you look for in a coach and what's a good coach? And maybe Ryan can help us with that as well. Uh, one of the things that, you know, Leto was talking about was, okay, so, you know, um, a coach, just because someone's highly ranked doesn't mean that that person could be a good coach. Um, you know, coaching, like teaching, because I'm a former teacher, is I think a particular skill that someone must have and that you need to convey your uh, strategy. And some, a lot of times, teachers and coaches are not really good at that even, but they know how to convey it and help, uh, you know, and bring out the best in a player. So Coach Ryan, can you talk to us a little bit about that too? Like, you know, um, one of the things I think people are interested in knowing is, you know, what's considered a good coach, especially in the private sector, right? You know, when you go to school, you are the head coach and therefore you are the head coach. But like privately, like whether I am in a high school or in college even, I'm looking for a head coach, what should I look for? You know, you need to look for somebody who is really dedicated to what, like the idea of what is the esports team. So if the esports team is someone, you know, a, a group that is going to win first place and everything, that that totally depends on talent, and and you might not get that sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if your coach is very dedicated, <clears throat> and and really just like I love the fact that there's a, a community around esports, I think that we can all improve greatly by you know just really working together and in the games that they're you know not fantastic in they find ways to learn and to improve themselves in that game and then try to teach that on on the high school level that's something that's that's really hard to find because not a lot of you know your teachers or anybody who's in the schools are dedicating time to getting good at the video games um, on the college front you know you've got some universities where things are kind of all run such as at concordia i run everything there and so for me it's a lot of you're not going to get much out of me for game to game because I'm trying to coordinate all of our schedules, trying to coordinate everything kind of on the upper level. And if I can dive into specific games and coaching that, that's great. But you're looking for somebody who has dedication to that. And it's not just the will to win, but it's the will to try to teach students and players how to improve themselves and then to continue, um, just continue that improvement and continue their, their team play on a director front, which is more of what my position is. I, since I kind of handle both, it's a little hard, but there are some schools that have directors and then they have specific game coaches. Um, out, out of those people, you're looking for someone who's going to help you manage your time on the collegiate front. They're going to say, Hey, here's the times you're coming in for practice. Here's the times you're doing a physical workout. Here's the times that you're going to be studying and doing your homework. Because that's, you know, the most important thing on the college level is trying to get that degree. And you're there doing it with esports and doing it with a, uh, with a scholarship to do that. That's kind of your, your secondary job. And they need to really be dedicated to helping you do that and not, um, not having you waste your money when you're, you know, going to, to college. You know, a coach, that's a really, really good point. And I want to say this over and over again. You know, we talk about using esports as a vehicle, right, to further someone's career, you know, whether you go into esports or not. And I think that with Josh and Camille, it's a really good example of how they're both, neither one of them are studying anything to go into esports. They're not going to continue in the esports field, but they're going to use esports as a vehicle to get them to that next level. And I think that um, I spend most of my time spot, uh, speaking to students and parents about this and that, you know, the stereotype is you play video games, you waste your time, right? But actually you use video, uh, play the passion of video game and your skill to get you to the next level. Absolutely. And I would add on top of that, you make a lot of great friends just through that. It, I mean, that's what the high school scene is um, for, for Nebraska that we've started was really just based on is like, gosh, there's all these kids that play video games, but they're not even friends with each other. So what, what do you do to get them all together? You play video games. Um, 
but yeah, and so you'll meet people and you'll be able then to have study partners with those groups where, you know, you probably all have the same interest in something. I mean, engineering seems to be kind of a common theme sometimes, but also, you know, computer and, and technical degrees and uh, sometimes like graphic arts. So you find a little bit of everything and, and through that you can really build some great relationships in college. Right. And I agree with both of you. I think, and Camille and Josh, I think, has also said the same thing. Though Josh tried to, you know, to prove his game just so he can hang out with his friends, right? That's on the team, right. you know. And Camille says that, you know, her her friend group became her team and that, that's a great support for her during the college. So that's a great, that's a great uh, add a plus, I think, to this whole thing. Um, the, the, another reason why I wanted Coach Leto to be on here was really something that I, I hit on when I was a former teacher at high school level was that privacy. And, you know, play, gamers start at 12, 13 years old, and they play throughout until whenever they, throughout college, right? And I think one of the things that it's, um, it's new, that wasn't really a thing during my generation, but is new to their generation, is privacy. Because, you know, if I put my name, especially my name, you know, Catherine and Mukte, you will, always, you will find everything you want to know about me and, and probably more than you want to know if you Google me. And so one of the things, if you notice here with Coach Leto, is that that's not his real name, obviously, okay? And that he doesn't have his picture usually on any Instagram or Facebook or anything else either. And then for him, and I want him to talk about this for himself, was that that's really important because a lot of times we put ourselves out there a little bit too much, I think, especially young kids. Um, when I was a teacher and my students were all underage or under 18, I really – really did not like this court in the beginning. I thought, oh my gosh, there's one more app I have to learn. Why can't we go the normal email and text, you know? I realized that really, truly, that Discord is a great way for underage players to communicate with other people because you have no idea what their full name is or where they live. And so I just want to say that for my students that's out there that, you know, that's in this session and, and whoever watches this after is recorded, that I think that that's something that they should be aware of. What do you think, Coach? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty, uh, on, on the side of Discord, it's a, a great way of, of reaching out and communicating. And yet, yes, keeping yourself private, keeping um, your information, your information. Um, and, and uh, you know, we got a lot of parents that are very concerned about different websites and stuff, especially once you get to a junior or senior, you're, you're not, you're a little bit more in control of that. And you're actually trying to get your info out if you're wanting to be recruited. But um no, as a seventh grader up through, you know, up through uh, sophomore year, keeping your identity, your identity and your, uh, you know, just your privacy in general is, is very important. Um, and in an online world, that's really hard to do sometimes, especially with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everything. So yeah, that's, that's something I had kind of never really thought about before, but um, the, the idea of keeping yourself private is, uh, is quite important. Right. At least something to be aware of, right? Because if you don't and you put yourself out there, sometimes, like you said, you want to be recruited. And a lot of people also use your gamer tag. And so I also, it used to really annoy me, to be honest with you, because I couldn't, I didn't know who was who, you know, they would come in Discord, have a name, have a different gamer tag. And then, and then they email me with a different name and I couldn't figure out who, but I really think that to, like, what you're saying about keeping your privacy if you use your gamer tag out there when you do instagram and you know twitter and so on it's another layer right that you know that people don't really can't really find you for example if they want to um unless you want them to of course okay all right so thank you very much so we have a couple of questions um that are uh i was given prior to this panel i want us to answer uh, one is can other esports related roles receive a scholarship like a caster, streamer, graphic designer, um, maybe coach, you can uh, feel that one. Absolutely. Yes, you, you can receive a scholarship. I know that we do it. Boise State does it all. Basically, any college that I would say has a legitimate, you know, established esport program um, is, is seeing the value in promoting these because as a caster, you're promoting things like communication and public speaking. Mm -hmm. As a, a streamer, same dang thing. And content creation is right alongside that. So that's like extremely important, especially in the modern world. Uh, graphic designer, same thing, creating content, trying to create things for the program. And then you can add that into your uh, portfolio. And that's, that's easy job experience, basically, that you can get in college doing something um, that you uh, enjoy and are passionate about. Right. So it sounds like you can not only use, um, again, a scholarship, right, to, uh, to be part of the, the ecosystem within a school, but also that you can build your portfolio and get a job after graduation. 
Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the big things that's really being pushed is that it's, it's just, there is a lot of opportunity um, to help make your college experience um, better to make it more um, affordable as well as help set you up for the future. Like college is supposed to. Right. Exactly. Like college is supposed to. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Next. Um, I would like to coach younger players. How do I find them? So I think this comes from, I know who asked this, this question. Uh, he's a, a, a very highly ranked player and, you know, he's thinking he would like to try his hand at coaching because he really likes that. So I guess his I question is really, how do you find, you know, kids to coach? Maybe Ryan will help us with that. I, the only place I can think of is either by reaching out to um, high schools who have organizations. Um, you can look to be a, and I, I don't remember what they're called, but you can reach out to an organization called NASIF, the North American um, Scholastic Esport Federation. And they have um, coaches who are, are high ranked players that they then send out to coach teams online in different parts of the country. And so schools that are a part of that organization during their regular season get a coach who helps talk them through um, basically the whole year for the most part. And, and it's, uh, you, I think right now it's pretty popular amongst either high, um, highly ranked players and like collegiate um, players as well who are just looking to do something kind of on the side with, with coaching. Absolutely, exactly. When I was a teacher and, and we had League of Legends uh, teams, it was exactly that. NASEF would help us. Um, every team will be given, you know, a coach, a dedicated coach. Now, that, that dedicated coach had many teams that he was coaching, but, you know, at least we were given a coach that we could work with uh, throughout the season. And that was really helpful, actually, especially me, who didn't know anything about League of Legends at the time. Okay, so is there a lot of traveling when you're on a team? Um, how about Josh? Um, all right. So for traveling, um, obviously the, at Michigan Tech, we are just starting our varsity program and we're budgeting out to go to one LAN uh, at least uh, during the year. Um, so most of the games are just played just at your PC or in uh, most cases at like your uh, team's facility. Um, so there isn't too much travel like there would be for like a football team or a basketball team where you're traveling like half your games when the other half's at home. Um, but like there, if you make a collegiate like finals for the tournaments that are running uh, collegiate tournaments, they're typically held at lands, in which case there'd be travel for those. Mm -hmm. So um, there could be like a fun travel or like if you're like in Michigan, there could be a land for all the Michigan teams that are trying to run a tournament. So that you might have like a fun land like that, or you could, uh, Basically, the better you do, the more lands you get. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a reward, if you will. Um, yeah, we at Michigan Tech, we haven't traveled yet. I know there are plans to, but we'll, we'll have to see. Okay, thank you. So it doesn't sound like it's a big part of it. Like you said, most of it is played remotely, probably at your own esports uh, center, right, at the school. So you play as a team? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, all right, great. Okay, thank you. That's a good question. Okay, uh, do colleges with esports school teams also have club teams? Well, that's a good question. Uh, Camille, did you know? Okay, so we started off as a club team. Both Josh and I played on our club team. And so, of course, like the core people who tried out for our varsity team did were pooled in there. Of course, like not everyone, it wasn't like everyone fully transferred. Um, only a couple or like a handful of the people were chosen. but. From what I've heard and from what the plans are, the club team is going to like remain and they're probably going to keep playing in the, we played in TESPA. So they're, yeah, they, you can have both. <laughs> okay, so, right, thank you so much. And Ryan, I think that's true, I think, of, of other schools as well, right? I think most schools seem to have like students get together, like, hey, there's an interest here, let's do a club team. And then the school finally goes, oh, okay, fine, you know, we'll, we'll spend some money and hire you a coach and get you a land center. It's, I think it's how it works usually. Yeah, a majority, I would think, have started off as having a club scene and then transitioned into that. I know at Concordia, we're slightly different because they were contemplating doing a varsity uh, team. And literally the same year that they were contemplating that, a uh, club team showed up on campus. So it was like kind of just popped up out of nowhere that is, yep, there's this gaming club and we're also going to get a varsity sports team. So sort of happened at the same time there. Um, 
for different thought processes of uh, one sort of at the community and the other aimed at, you know, trying to get um, students onto campus for esports specifically. Right. So I really applaud your, your administration, right? Because a lot of schools are the, the opposite way, you know, um, the students kind of get together and they show that there's interest and they do it for a while and on a shoestring budget and when no one really support them. And then the school gets the clue like, okay, well, let's do this. Um, so in, in most cases, since you are a, a head coach and it's a, an official, uh, you know, team at your school, uh, are all co travel expenses covered then if there were travel expenses? Yes, uh, we would be able to add that into our budget because we've got a full operating budget. We have a full um, startup budget and everything like that. So yeah, if in the, the situation of traveling, it would just be a, you know, we're going to put that into our budget that we have this many days we cover this food just as any other sport would be covering those types mm -hmm. of things. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And I think that covers all the questions that I had already uh, out there. Um, if anybody else has questions, please put in the chat for me and so I can take a look at it. And also, if you want to reach out to us, please reach out to us. Um, there's many different ways, of course, you can email me. Um, but we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on LinkedIn, reach out any way you want. And of course, we'll also have a discord as well. So if you reach out to me, I'll, I'll also connect you to our discord. Um, anything else? I think that's pretty much it for me. The only other thing is if you want to get a hold of me, of course, um, always email me, uh, kmukte at coastline.edu. So if we don't have any other questions, I think we'll end our session. Um, a big, huge thank you to our uh, panels. Thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate your time and sharing your insight with us. I think the students at, at Coastline Community College really will benefit from your uh, expertise and your input, uh, especially because we're starting out as well. You know, we're just started launching the, the program and students are extremely excited about doing this. I think we have a, do we have one? Yes, we do. I actually took a health course at Coastline, by the way. I don't oh, you did? in his, in high school. I did it online. I just realized I just connected the dots in my head. <laughs> oh my God. You're a coastline person. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Okay. Um, well, the school has expanded. I'm not sure which um, uh, facility you were at. It was Newport Beach. There's um, Newport Beach. I was at Newport Beach. Beach. Oh, okay. All right. okay. <laughs> so we have one question from Robin. He says, uh, is there an eSport team for Rocket League? You know, Robin, um, there was some talk of it. Uh, I think there, I don't know if we have three kids who want to play Rocket League, but if you, um, what I could do is I will Discord, I mean, I'll, I'll invite you to the Discord. And then once you join the Discord, go ahead and, and uh, assign yourself a role as Rocket League and then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, um, let's see. I was wondering what colleges look for in a recruit. So I think um, from Coach Ryan, I think they're really talking about, I think the secondary to your in-game ranking, which is what most students worry about the most, I think what he's really looking for um, is uh, students who have some tournament experience, for example, some competitive experience, um, who is really hardworking, who is dedicated to the sport and who's willing really to uh, you know, do whatever it takes right, to get better and work with uh, you know, their teammates. And then our uh, next question is, is there a poll in the Discord? Uh, you mean, are you talking about Eddie? Are you talking about if there, um, is there, there should be roles for different games in there. So you can identify as whatever game you're interested in. Um, and then you can ask to form some teams. That's how the League of Legends and the, um, the Valorant teams were formed. And if you have trouble with that, just Discord me. I, I'm, I'm Catherine and a 3542 on Discord. Okay, any other questions? You're welcome, Eddie. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody's time and effort and um, we'll see you hopefully on the Coastline Community College campus, especially you, Camille, when you come visit. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.